so many notes. <laughs> All right, we are back for another Vanderpump Rules recap. We are in Lake Tahoe. Ariana and Katie are not with us because they've decided they need to open up something about her, which still isn't open, but that's okay. You know where we did go? We went to Schwartz and Sandy's, and like Raquel Levis, we spent the night with Tom Sandoval. Let's get into it. You're listening to No Filter with Zach Peter, your go-to source for all the latest pop culture and reality TV tea, surf fresh all week long. Now, let's dive in. Okay. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, are you? What was this episode four, episode five of Vanderpump? Check your your. That's notes. the one thing I didn't put in my notes. Wow. <laughs> Always such detailed five, five. notes. I'm pretty sure I saw. Five I think it was, was five. Like, Damn, are we already at five? I think it was five, and we're off the we're off the tails of getting Graham back from Lisa Vanderpump. She has saved him from Rachel Levis because her mom can't be bothered by the dog, so she gave up the dog, and then somehow Lisa Vanderpump ended up with the dog, and she saved it and brought it to James. And now they're bringing the dog out to Lake Tahoe. The dog is flying private. This dog doesn't look as bad as Rachel was making the dog look. You mean behavior wise? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have no idea. I don't I don't own dogs. I, I know your tiny terrors are not so tiny terrors, but that's pretty much it. Well, they I mean Sky and Sully are also part golden doodle. So which is uh, what that's right, they sure are. Yep. Yeah. They're just golden doodle mixed I think with probably a Labrador. Just a lot of high energy, right? A lot of high energy. Um, which is why we go on a lot of walks. Yeah. We go to the dog park and we play fetch. And you'll be very proud of me. There was this woman that I met at the dog park today. She came with her little dog and her little dog rolled up in a stroller. So already I hated the dog. Okay. Already not How with it. How are you going to hate a dog? Because it came in a stroller and I was like, I already know that this is going to be an issue. I just, I can tell she's going to be a bitch. And so we walk into the well, dog I hate park the girl not the dog i do yeah i don't hate the dog i hate that the dog was in a stroller but so we get into the dog park today and he's like oh she looks at me all scared and i get it i have two big dogs and they're excited because they're puppies they have high energy and i always like to slowly introduce them one by one to other dogs because i know it can be a little intimidating and have two big giant puppies get excited and she's like oh no and i was like what's wrong and she's just like my dog is scared of other dogs I was, like, I was like, don't Why'd do you it, bring Zach. It to a I was like, don't do it, Zach. I was like, bite your tongue. Don't be a bitch. Don't be a bitch. Don't be a bitch. And, and you'll be very proud of me. I bit my tongue. And I was like, excuse me? And she's just like, I, my dog is just afraid of other dogs. And in my head, I'm like, well, first of all, does your dog know it's a fucking dog? Because it came with the fresh blowout, rolling up in a stroller, you know, like, I don't know what, right? But also, why are you bringing it to a Thank dog Thank you. Park? That's the more important piece that I wanted to say. I, it was right at the tip of my tongue. I wanted to be like, you realize you're at a dog park, right? Like, the one place you're going to run into other dogs. Why would you bring your dog to a dog park if your dog is afraid of other dogs? That's the main place you're running into other dogs. Thank you. And she was just, like, so caught off guard by it. And I... I didn't say anything, but I'm sure my face said enough because she packed up little pepper. She put pepper back in the little stroller and they strolled on out of there. And I said, goodbye. Well, also at that dog park, don't they also have a small dog area yes. and a big dog area? Did yes. she go into the big dog area? She went into the big dog area, which is why I had a lot less patience because there was a little dog that was in the little dog area. Um, and she was apparently that dog was tiny and yeah. she didn't want her dog with the tiny, tiny little dog because her dog is afraid of dogs because her dog doesn't know she's a dog. Okay, well, back into the episode, y'all. So I don't have much patience for Rachel's. You don't say. Um, but yeah, we James seems to be very happy with, with Hippie. That's the new name. And as Ellie yeah. tells us, if Rachel can become Rachel, coming from, you know, Transformer, she used to be Raquel, then Hippie can now become Hippie from Graham Cracker. Fair. I mean, I don't love renaming a dog because I just feel like it's very confusing for a dog. But, and listen, I don't consider myself to be that great of a dog parent. I think I'm failing at this every fucking day. But, I mean, do sometimes you know I look some at people have dogs that have like 10 names. Like they name them the initial name. Then it's all like the little subsets of names and everything and the goofy things that parents just call them. They know who you're talking to. Yeah, the dogs are smart. Um, their parents, not so much. But anyway, so we 
We then are getting ready to go to Lake Tahoe. We see Sandoval, and he's going shopping for some new clothes with Schwartzy, who we saw last night. We went to Schwartz and Sandy's last night um, for the Vanderpump Watch Party. I just adore Schwartz. I feel like he's like a walking hug. Like he just, you see him and he's just always happy and he's welcoming everybody and everything like that. He's like a, a golden doodle. Yeah, he is. He really is. And I mean, I saw Sandoval for all of two seconds and then we bounced. Yeah, we were on our way out and there were um, Kyle Chan, who's friends with Sandoval. He, you'll see him more in the season of Vanderpump, but I got to meet him at Sheena's show at the Bourbon Room, the infamous night back in august at the bourbon room for sheena's oh, live podcast God. and i was sitting i was uh sitting with kyle and we chatted and you know whatever um connected from there and then he also has his friend tyler that i realized lives across the street from me yeah and so uh we have met him we've gone to his last thursday events mm-hmm. and that, that one time that we went to that Okay, we went one time. We went one time. Okay, we went one time. <laughs> anyway, and we happen to go by accident. We happen to just fall upon it. Yeah, literally. Yeah, we weren't even going to stay, and then it was like, ah, oh, might as well. Um, but anyway, that was when we met that that model guy. Who, Remember the one that was oh, trying to show us his dick? Him. He was trying to show. Oh, this guy was hot for Zach. He was so into Zach, and Zach was having nothing to do with this man well like a legit model gorgeous gorgeous man zach no nope, couldn't be bothered lead with your personality like i don't care like the first thing that's you, true he was trying to lead with his dick and zach was like absolutely not not I impressed no interest i was not impressed i mean it was a, i mean it was substantial for sure but like that's not what you lead with when you want to get to know someone have you met gay men no i wish i hadn't <laughs> but so um we so kyle and tyler were there so on our way out because we left a little early um i went to go say goodbye to them and there was a man standing in the corner and he had a hat on and he was kind of just there and i'm like he has like sandoval energy i was like but there's no way sandoval is going to be out right now especially after the new york times article like mm-hmm. there's no way he's going to be at schwartz and sandy's for a vanderpump rules watch party schwartz meanwhile is we were he was taking shots i took a shot with schwartz um he offered josh a shot but josh was being a cunt that is not fucking true i'm gonna beat the shit out of him right now I was taking a work call that was important, so I could not take a shot with Schwartz, which really made me mad that I was taking a work call because I wanted to take a shot with Schwartz. I took a shot with Schwartz, and then I went to say we went to say goodbye to Kyle and Tyler. And as I'm saying goodbye to them, the man standing next to them is like, "Hi," and I look at him and I was like, oh, "It's Tom Scandiball. It's Sandy Balls," and he. And I was like, oh, hi. And he, I was like, how are you? And he's, you know, because clearly he's doing well. I was, he's like, I'm good. And I was, he's like, how are you? And I was like, I'm good. And I was like, okay, this is awkward. I mean, for me, like, this man has no idea who I am. But I'm still standing there thinking like, oh, my God. I have talked so much shit about you. And now I'm standing right in front of you. And so then I was like. Bye. <laughs> Josh nixed that real quickly and we exited. Um, because I was like, this is I have well, I haven't seen him since he was in my show in the bourbon room like two years ago. I didn't realize that you had him in your show. Our first show at the bourbon room. Wow. We had Schwartz and Sandoval and Sheena and Brock. Cute. It was a good time. And uh, I've never said this, but we weren't allowed to have Sheena on stage with them. What do you mean? It was a request that we had Sheena in a separate part of the show that night. Why? I think someone wanted to be the headliner. Oh. And so we we had to keep Sheena separate that night. And we had to put her into an opening bit with Brock earlier, which I didn't even tell Sheena. I was just like, we have a special bit, you know, worked out for you. And we're going to play a newlyweds game with you. Hmm. But, yeah interesting that was the night jeff went out with all of them and got to hang out with raquel our jeff our jeff crazy yes. little jeff yes god i love he's him not so little. much no he's not little he that's a full-on man 
but he just feels like a little boy to me. Because he is a little boy. He's a little boy on the inside. He really is. Um, which, by the way, our last two episodes of Disaster Daters are out now. So if you guys are not, oh in, my god, y'all have got to listen to this shit. It's wild. You're gonna see oh what monsters. Like I was when I was looking at the final two episodes that we went with. I was like, we are monsters. Jeff literally. There's one story where Jeff talks about trying to ditch this guy that he was dating at the airport, literally trying to leave this man at the airport <laughs> as Jeff does. Um, and then <laughs> there, I tell a story about how there was this one guy that I kept seeing for a while, but it was only because I was using him for his design works. So I was using him for free labor. So I kept going out with him, but it was actively like trying to not have sex with him because I wasn't interested in him, but I needed his free labor. And I had to make sure we saw the project through before I cut him loose. Oh my God. You know, Which, karma is a real thing. Just because you didn't have sex with him doesn't mean you didn't leave No, him I did have sex with him at the beginning. And then eventually I stopped having sex with him because then I needed to that use is, him. That is bad karma. You were using that man. I was. Listen, desperate times call for desperate measures, okay? So I, I mean, listen, it was never going to happen. He was like 41 with a roommate, four, like th through two roommates. And I was like, this is not going to happen. Okay. So, but listen, he was a very nice man. And I, did feel badly about using, using him the him. way that I did. Um, but it's okay. He had a good time. He got to enjoy my company. I would really love to know what this man thinks of you these days. He's actually very sweet and has recent has continued to reach out to me and continued to pursue me. And I've just, you know, I said, when you no longer have roommates, maybe I'll reconsider. Oh and now I think he has a boyfriend that's, Good for him. Not as cute as me, but whatever. Listen, he had a prize, but he just, you know, couldn't. He did not have anything. You were using him. He had nothing. <laughs> he had an ability to contribute. Okay, let's move on. Well, and then John Hill tells a story about how he, because John Hill's on the on Disaster Daters, and he tells a story about how he gave this guy his address, so this guy flew in from New York to come and meet him, showed up at his door, and then John completely ghosted him. Yeah. Oh, my God. So you can go and vote for who's the biggest monster of the three of us. Oh, God, I, I don't know. I, I really feel like Jeff has some stories. <laughs> Well, of those three stories that we shared. Of, the, of just those three I, stories? Yeah. I mean, I think to go someone that flew out to see you it's is terrible. Probably, that's probably the worst. It's horrible. Can you imagine being that person? Well, what a fucking idiot. Like, why would you fly all the way out there? You would need confirmation. You would need to be like, hey, just confirming. Hey, like, well, that's his bad. I don't know. I got to re-listen to it. So he, they didn't confirm and he just showed up. I guess at some point, I mean, he gave him his address. John's like, but I don't remember ever meeting this guy. Okay, that's where I got confused. All right, I thought you were saying that he said, this is my address, come here this time, and the guy showed up and he just ghosted him. No, he did, but he just didn't remember inviting the guy over. But clearly he gave the guy his address if the guy had his address. Okay, this has nothing to do with uh, uh, Vanderbilt well, Rules. But it's more interesting than this episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just got to throw that in a little bit. But so then we continue. We see that Sandoval did not hear from Rachel for his birthday. And he's very sad about it because he was very in love. You know what that is? The world's tiniest violin playing My Heart Bleeds for You. Well, it matches because you have the world's tiniest hands. <laughs> <sighs> Almost made a dirty joke with that, but I refrained because I am learning how to bite my tongue, guys. Look at that. The dog park. I wasn't a bitch today. I'm practicing. Because I, I gave up being a bitch for Lent. And it's almost Easter. I think I can make it all the way. You have failed at your Lenten penance. When was the last time I was a bitch? Last night. Who was I a bitch to last night? Me. When? 
I bought you dinner. Oh, so no, whatever I did, so, clearly so I made that, up for like, That balances it out. If you buy me dinner, then you can just be a bitch to me. When was I a bitch to you? Oh, my God. Can we recap this episode? We'll talk about all this shit after we finish recapping the episode. Uh, People aren't here to listen, hear us if I, at each other. If I was a bitch, I was, it, I probably, you probably deserved it. I don't ever deserve anyone being a bitch to me. Look, yes, but you know, know, see, it comes see, out of love. See, we're not even like recapping the episode. End up here saying, what did she just walk into? That's what happens when you walk in late. See? Bitch. That was not bitchy. All right, let's do a poll. Was that bitchy? What is my bitch bitcho meter for the night? I didn't break it. Yeah, okay. Anyway, well, do you think Sandoval should have been sad that he didn't hear from Rachel on his birthday? All right. Um, if I'm, let's say I'm walking into this for the first time, never having seen an episode of this show, not knowing what was going on, sure. You think, I mean, no, it was his birthday. She could have made him a little macaroni art happy face. <laughs> that would have been the nice thing for her to do. Very inexpensive, too. Yeah, they have that at the budget. You got a birthday coming up. I know I'm getting you. Macaroni art? Macaroni art. Okay, first of all, my birthday's in June. It's hardly coming up. It is. It, it, ish. <laughs> I don't know why I feel like we're practically in May, but let's not do that. We're not going to rest the time. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like anybody would have been sad in that situation, regardless of, you know. Yeah. Ball or not. Yeah. You know, I was very sad on my birthday last year. Why? Oh, that's right, Josh. You weren't there. Oh, that's right, Josh. You weren't there. So you wouldn't know. No, I wouldn't. So then we get to Sheena and Brock and they're going swimsuit shopping, but then they get into a fight over the babysitter. Okay. This I had an opinion on though. So I, number one, un understand that Sheena has a lot of anxiety and everything like that. But these people are also on like a look at Mallory remembers. Shut up. But they are also very much so in the public eye. You don't know who you're getting to come watch your child, why they're there. They obviously are going to know who you are. Yeah. Unless you get like some old like Mrs. Doubtfire granny, I would be very like very skeptical over any young person trying to come in and watch the baby. Yeah, you just need to be mindful. I mean, and listen, also take advantage of Sheena's mom who's doing it for free. But at the same time, though, you don't really want your mother-in-law around all the time. No, that's why I get Brock's frustration, because he's a little tired of yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I can totally see both sides of it. But, yeah, I mean, that was kind of a little bit of a knockdown drag out. And then storming out and... It was a lot. And then she's like, Wait, why are we arguing in front of other people? And he's like, because we're having a discussion. Yeah. I mean, I argue everywhere I go. So... Oh, shit. It just sometimes, but like, there's nothing wrong. Like, people have disagreements. It's okay to have the poor girl that was racking up those bikinis felt so bad because they're yelling and she's just like trying to do her job and the camera's just on her as she's trying to like awkwardly, like. Do you think she felt bad though? Or do you think she was like, this shit is good? I'm sure she thought it was good, <laughs> but she, you could tell how awkward she felt because the camera's on, like, you know, she wanted to be all up in it, but the cameras yeah. are on her. She's like, I have to pretend that I'm not paying attention when I really want to pay attention. God, it would have been so funny if she would have like stepped in and tried to mediate. Okay, guys. So what exactly is the problem here? I mean, I thought Shana was a little overreacting in that moment. Like, I understand her frustration with Brock, but I thought the way that that fight escalated and Brock was like, we're not fight. Like, what is like, why are we doing this right now? I don't know. I feel like you're not seeing the full spectrum of this hard disagreement that they're having. There, I'm sure, have been conversations behind closed doors that they won't talk about. I 
guess. I don't know. That's just my thought. But we finally make it to Tahoe. Lisa's getting ready to open Wolf. I actually want to go to Wolf. I do too. But I got to say, it kind of just reminds me of like if Pump and Tom Tom had a baby. Like the the aesthetic seems very similar to that. I disagree. I think the aesthetic, I like the aesthetic. It's very dark. There are a lot more like horns. I think it's a lot more masculine. It's a lot more woodsy. Um, that I, I like it a lot better than, at least from what we've seen from the, the sketches. The only thing I saw was horns and woods. No, no, no. That's like the only thing different that I saw. Everything else just looked like stuff from like Pump and Tom Tom. It actually more than Pump and Tom Tom. It reminded me of her Vegas restaurant. Um, God, I just went there. Isn't was that it? Paris? Too? No, Vanderpump Paris. Right? Vanderpump Paris. Is at, that? Yeah. At Caesars. I have no idea. Yeah. there. Well, she has two of them. Vanderpump Paris and the other one's Vanderpump something. But anyway, I that it because it's darker, the you know, it's got a little more of a late night vibey vibe to it. Um, I mean, I guess her they all kind of have the same vibe. Oh, Vanderpump Gardens is the other one. Oh, there you go. All right, but, what's next? Trailblazing through this episode, but we see them and they get to demolish, they're demolishing wolf or they're demolishing what is going to soon be Wolf, we see that, you know, Sandoval's very upset with everyone but himself. And he even comes into the trip saying that, you know, everyone just wants him to grovel, but he's not going to do that. Everyone else also screwed up, so it takes two to tango, and we should all be working on repairing our relationship. Thoughts? Just fucking take ownership for what you did. <laughs> that was... Put us all out of our misery. Yeah, just like, yes, you should grovel right now. Like, this yeah. is, you just finished banging Raquel. You were just still texting Raquel. Her, you know, her coochie juices are fresh on his oh, mustache. God. Nasty. You nasty. Mm -hmm. But anyway, he's mad at Sheena. He's mad at Worm with the Mustache. He's mad at James Kennedy. He's mad at Lala. Sheena's mad that she had the restraint, which I'm also like, Sheena, let the mouse go. Like, I get it. You're upset about the restraining order, but like, we need to move on from that. And then Schwartz, he was upset that he's single at 40. I can relate. <laughs> 39, still single. Ah. <laughs> uh. But so we get to dinner, we get a little howl out of all of them. And then um, by the end of the episode, we see Sandoval and James sit down and hash out their differences. And Sandoval finally does apologize for how he hurt James and what he did to him. Well, I really do think that Sandoval was like a brother, a big brother to James. Yeah. And James felt very hit on. Yeah. So. Some people like that. You know what? As words come out of my mouth, I realize I probably shouldn't be saying that because he's going to take it in a certain direction. <laughs> uh, so do you think that this is a good opportunity for Sandoval and James to move forward? I think it's a baby step. It seems like a baby step to me. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, obviously we have to see, but... I. I think I think like a tiny little baby step. He seems to get into it with Lala in the next episode, though. Who I think I missed that. Who, who Sandoval? In the preview, James? yeah, no, in the preview, uh, Sandoval and Lala get into it on the boat on the yacht. Well, she's like, "You are terrifying." And he's just like, "You don't show your real life, Lala. God, <laughs> you sound just like you. <laughs> People like my impression of him." <laughs> so. Oh, but wait. We do find out, though, that Ariana is willing to give up the house. About fucking time. But she is only willing to give up the house. He can have the walls, and that's it. She wants to take everything else with her, except for the Lego portrait. Hmm. Which, by the way, is possible for, um, for them to, to rebuild without Sandoval in it. 
Oh, well, there you go. Silver line. They offered that to her. I like how she's like, listen, but all this furniture is kind of, you can have the house, but you're just getting the walls. Yeah. I mean, good, like, for, good her. for her. Sell it, liquidate it, do what you got to do, girl. Live and your life. Just, and move on. Move on to, to a beautiful place that is not tainted. Mm-hmm. Tainted. Love. I don't know that I'd want any of those mattresses, though. No, where cows coochie juice is all over them. Drip. Drop. Stop. Like when I hit it with that lip gloss. Okay, any other closing thoughts about Vanderpump? Oh, just the fact that um, someone shit on something about her doorstep. Mm, Liam did McSweeney. You... <laughs> oh my God. No, did you hear that? She was like, uh, they uh, they got there and someone had just taken a big old shit on their doorstep. That is one thing that is so nasty about L.A. is the fact that actual humans will shit in the street or on your doorstep. Don't do shit on my doorstep. Well... I mean, they'd have to go up a lot of floors to get to your doorstep. Although I feel like that day might be coming, Zach. You know what? <laughs> it's not. It's not even put that into the universe. Um, Megan says Tom Sandoval was dating a twenty-three-year-old. Am was also Ariana Maddox was also. So why? Why what? Yeah, I'm They're allowed to date. I don't think he was officially dating anybody at that time. I don't think he became official with dating someone until later on. Because now he's dating somebody, right? Is I he? Believe, yeah, I believe now he has a girlfriend. I don't oh. know if they're still together, but they were together very recently. I have no idea. All right. Well, that's our recap of Vanderpump Rules tonight. We'll be back next Wednesday. Um, you have a new recap of Feud. Yes, I am recapping Feud, Capote versus the Swans. Typically on Tuesdays at noon, but unfortunately I had some tech difficulties yesterday so it was just uploaded uh, about an hour ago so if you'd like go give that a watch it's on my youtube channel youtube.com slash at josh from louisiana also you're almost at 750 subscribers i am so let's let thank that you. be the goal and, and a big thank you to zach zach's been a huge part of that so i'm very appreciative and also very appreciative to all of y'all yeah i've so been buying you. subscribers but thanks well long as it's not coming out of my pocket. <laughs> I will say, though, I'm really having so much fun doing my recaps of Southern Charm while I'm cooking and doing cooking tutorials. Mm -hmm. That's been a lot of fun. So I think I actually, when I do recaps, might start incorporating just cooking. There you go. Thank you, Mallory. I love you. You do have, yeah. You make some good dishes. You've got a great apron. I do. Zach got me an apron, Josh, from Louisiana for my birthday. Wow. Oh, what did you get me for my birthday? You're oh. going to get a knuckle sandwich for this birthday. You know, <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, all right, guys, go subscribe to Josh from Louisiana. His handle's in the description below. Let's see if by next week we can get him to 750. He's at 730. Please hold. Subscribe. Josh from Louisiana. Look at Jen says, I'm loving the feud recaps. Joe says that you're bringing it with the YouTube thumbnails. Oh, thanks. There you go. Thank you. Um, also, guys, I was just on Kim Pyrus YouTube channel today, um, which his subscribers are loving me. I, was I took a little peek at the comments. Someone called me a demon. I was like, oh, thank you. I'm so flattered. Well, a demon? Yeah. yeah. Like something straight out of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> wow, thank you. Demons are very powerful. All right. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. You can follow me at Just Plain Zach all over the internet. Follow the podcast at Netflix with Zach on Instagram. We'll be here every Wednesday recapping Vanderpump Rules. And you can catch new episodes of No Filter with Zach Peter Monday through Thursday with bonus episodes on Fridays. And be sure to tune into Disaster Daters. Oh, look at Jen said. See, the Zach Pack showed up in Campire's live chat, but his comments, they're not loving me. Oh. Um, but um, yes, catch Disaster Daters. You can listen to it on all podcast platforms or watch it exclusively on Spotify. Because if there's one thing I know how to do, it's how to not fumble a bag. So when you have somebody like Spotify in your court, you don't screw up that deal. Snap, snap. All right. We will talk to you later. Bye. Bye, y'all.